Hey guys and welcome back, my name is James and in today's video we've got two ammunition pouches from the Swiss Army dating back to the 1960s. We'll be taking them apart, cleaning them up and rebuilding them to make some really cool clutch bags or satchels or handbags, however you want to call it. This was a really fun little project to do, hopefully you guys learn a bit along the process and enjoy. These ammo bags are from 1965 and 1964, they are made from uh, for the Swiss Army by their master saddlers, or at least they're called Maître Cellier in French, and therefore Swiss French as well. And the closest would be master saddlers, although they're more technically master leather workers, so these are completely made by hand. Out of now, I'm told this is calfskin leather, about 2.5 to 4 millimeters thick, uh, and the leather condition, as you can see on both of these, is very, very different. The first one you saw was from 1965 and the second one from 1964, but ironically the second one has lasted much, much better throughout time. And uh, the leathers on this are remarkably different, the first one being much more traditional leather, or at least leather finish, with uh, what seems to be uh, quite a nice patina, natural patina, but the second one I was very curious about, the 1964 version, so not the one you're watching right now on screen, but the other one, is actually what looks to be a very heavily waxed leather, or at least it's an oiled leather with the back plate being uh, heavily coated with something that I suppose is a type of wax, and I'll show you later on why uh, I think this, but these are very specific ammunition pouches from the Swiss Army made to carry STGW 57 self-loading service rifle ammunition cartridges. Now I believe there were two cartridge two cartridges per ammunition pouch and from what it looks like these would be perfect sitting at the lower back of your back and uh, they look to be very comfortable in that situation and obviously these have been used at least extensively <laughs> weathered I'd like to say throughout the years and the one I'm, I'm currently working on is the 1965 version and this one has got some extensive use marks along the leather. Now I cannot tell, my, my best guess is that this is just due to uh, leaving this pouch in a, an area which was not necessarily the, the driest and it rotting away, then drying out, then rotting away again, but there are whole sections of that back panel which have been clearly attacked by something and it's clearly not animal. Uh, for me at least it's just pure rot and letting it leave it, uh, leaving it in a corner. Um, so the first thing I did was to break open the whole thing by cutting open these stitches and obviously since it's a saddle stitch this took me a long long time to do. I will be replacing this rivet as it's a pivotal part of the build to hold the whole thing together by a, another a new brass rivet, so not exactly the same, but overall I'm going to try and keep everything as is with all the original hardware, the only changes being the rivets I've just talked about, secondly the stitching obviously, which is going to be a much cleaner, neater stitching, or at least that's the hope, and lastly I'll be adding two extra rivets to make a small attachment for uh, the, like, the belt the loop around, which we'll have a look at later. So on this 1965 version one, as I was telling you, it's got some extensive wear on the back plate here, and I was tempted just to replace the back plate, but then you lose the authenticity, the authenticity, I can't remember, you lose the originality <laughs> of this piece, and I just felt that it was wrong to try and replace something as important as this, and instead I was just going to be very careful cleaning it out, very careful uh, just making sure that this piece of leather was nourished, and that even though it's gone through a lot and it's quite damaged, that it should last for years to come with a good coat of protective oils and greases and just good amount of tender love and care. So once you've got your different pieces all cut out, the first thing to do is go ahead and wash them. These are 50, 60 years old now, and they've not necessarily been kept in the best conditions. Ironically, or funny enough, I, I bought these from two completely different sellers, and um, maybe this tells by the two completely different states that these were in, uh, as the 1964 one, the older one, was actually in much, much better condition. Now, is this due to the type of leather used, or is it due to the, the wear and care that was provided to this piece during the years? I think probably a combination of both. My best guess is that the waxed leather of the older po uh, pocket, or the older ammunition pouch, helped a lot in protecting it from uh, just elements in general, whereas even though it didn't patina as nicely 
it's in a much, much better condition. But already just cleaning these out has just brought the leather back to a more natural state here. We're starting to see, see some nice colors pop back and we're starting to see that despite the damage, well, the leather is still in great, great shape. And I'm gonna be using every single piece of this build back again to make uh, these pouches brand new. And the whole goal for me is that these pouches even though they're 60 years old nearly, they will last another 60 or even longer, uh, many more years to come. And this is why I think this is a heavily waxed oiled leather. It's the back place, I wasn't sure what it was, if it was a combination of leather and something else or a, a treated leather. And well, my best guess after rebuilding this is that it's a heavily waxed, simply uh, put, a heavily waxed back here and that they've coated it in some kind of wax, but the leather underneath is still good and ready to go. Once it's all cleaned up, I always love to use Neatsfoot oil. I mean, Neatsfoot oil for me is the basic ingredient here to keeping leather, old leather especially, nice and supple and nourished with the essential oils that this leather needs. The only thing I'm gonna do is just there, as you see, I oiled the inside of the back plate on the 1964 version only on the inside of that one. Um, actually, I go ahead and oil the inside of all of it, but um, <laughs> sorry, I contradicted myself. But you'll see that later on, I apply conditioner to the inside of that piece and only that piece because all the others I'm not conditioning the inside. I'm oiling the inside, yes, because I want those oils to seep in and really help nourish the leathers. But for the conditioner I'll be using later, I'm only going to condition the inside of the back plate for the older version. The reason I'm doing that is because of the coating on the outside. I was afraid that the conditioner wasn't actually getting through that coating properly, which is why I decided to do that. So we've gone ahead and added Neatsfoot oil, uh, let it dry, let that leather soak in the goodness of the oils and then buff it off. And this by now, you've removed pretty much all of the dirt, first of all, you've cleaned up your leather and you've rejuvenated it once already with that Neatsfoot oil. But I'm gonna go even further by using Safir Renovateur, which is for me and for many people out there, one of the best conditioners to keep good leather good for a long, long time. If your leather's been dried out, if your leather needs that bit of extra tender care, then go ahead and grab yourself some Safir Renovateur. It's a it's, a, it's an amazing product. I'll be honest and say, I don't know what kind of magic they use inside this, but I absolutely love the result it gives me. It seeps into that leather nice and slow. You don't need much, you really don't need much. Now I'm going ahead with some heavy coats of this stuff, but you really don't need much as it helps greatly in protecting the leather. You want to let it dry and then buff it off. And as you can see, I did go ahead and condition the inside of that piece, but only on that piece did I use the conditioner on the inside. Once your conditioner is dried, you can go ahead and buff it off, as I just mentioned, and this will start revealing. Uh, first of all, there is a small amount of wax inside that renovateur, which helps as well, gives a nice bit of shine. Obviously, wax doesn't just help protect the leathers, but also gives it that extra pop and pizzazz that you really like in a good piece of leather. But I really find that the renovateur does a great job in getting these leathers nice and nourished once more. Now, yes, you've got the Neesfoot oil, uh, so you don't really necessarily need that extra nourishment, but on something this old, I really wanted to make sure that I was taking every single possible step to make it perfect. Now, these were actually made, as I mentioned, by master leather workers, and you can see the stitching is all done by hand, and it's all different. And these two pieces were embossed on the back with the, the name of that particular saddle worker or, or leather worker who actually made this. And this is, I think, one of the things that makes these pieces totally unique, is that even though you can find many, many on the internet right now, on Etsy, for example, every single one of these, and you can see it here, this one was actually E. Gigonde, the, uh, the leather worker who did this 1965 version. And I find that this brings back so much history in it. And this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to keep this back plate. But this is for me, one of the things that make these pieces totally unique. Now, I did mention I wanted to re-thread the whole thing. And I think this is one of the parts that will give it a great new life, really making it look new, making it look like maybe less of a military item and more of a, a fashion accessory that you might want to take out on town uh, as a statement of bringing something old back to life. And for me, even though 
I, I love to use other threads as well at moments, but for me, Maisie here, uh, just gorgeous. The contrast is just right, just big enough for me to feel like, yes, this is showcasing the, the, the threads, showcasing the, the saddle stitch in just the right way. And I was using the, obviously, the old holes again here, trying not to make any new holes as much as possible, and it, indeed, I didn't have to, which was nice. But it was a, a fun experiment as well, also going through old saddle stitching and old pieces here, and basically bringing them back to life with some brand new stitching. And this is when you start seeing this piece come back together again, not just in the physical aspect, the literal coming back together, being rebuilt, but also coming back to life a bit, where an old piece suddenly starts feeling like it's still in the game, it's still got it, it's still there. As I mentioned, I like to keep as much of the old hardware as possible, but I did add these two D-rings on either side, and uh, these are, even though there are a lot of people who like to recreate things, a lot of people who like to restore things, want to keep things absolutely original, and I completely respect that, uh, and agree with that most of the time. But for me, part of this build, the whole point of bringing it back to life is that it won't work as a, an ammunition bag anymore. For me, it's something that if you give it to someone as an ammunition bag, well, unfortunately, they might use it once, twice, but that's about it, really. I mean, everyday life, when are you going to use this? It's an impractical shape to put on your belt. It's a bit too rigid to be on a belt. Uh, it's not the best. It can be used so, uh, as that, yes, definitely, as a small pouch on your belt for anything else. It's like perfect for keys, wallet, phone, something like that. But unless you do something more, it's not going to be used as much as you'd want to. And by adding these two D-rings in locations which just are perfect for it, you actually rebuild this into something that's much more than an ammunition bag, something vintage that you'd like to showcase. It actually becomes a functional object, because as you'll see in a few minutes, we will be attaching a, a strap to this, and having those two extra D-rings give it a real shape that it, it holds nicely on the side of your body and it really just feels good. So before making the strap and before finishing things up, I did go ahead and polish up this piece in front which is the leather attachment strap or button thingy in the front and that already made a big difference. But before making the strap, we want to give it a final coat of polish. Now, because these are two different types of leathers, very different types of leathers, we're going to be using two different types of finishes on it. The first one is a type of uh, oily, it's, it's a finish specifically made for oil, oiled leathers, and it doesn't shine it up as much as you might think, but it gives it a great luster. It's like a matte finish and matte bright finish, and it looks good, it looks great, it looks amazing, it looks wonderful. But I do have to say that I am biased here and prefer the Pat Deluxe or the Saphir, the traditional classic wax here, uh, which give the leather, uh, gives the leather a nice shine, a really good strong shine. Now that your pouch is ready to go, the last little bit you want is go ahead and make straps. Now because the leather is so old and it's got such a great patina, it's actually quite hard to find straps that matched quite well enough. In the end, I did find two straps which I liked, this one we'll be looking at here is in a dark coffee colour and it works perfectly with the oiled leather of the 1964 uh, pouch. The first thing I did was just groove out those edges to make sure that the edges were a bit more rounded out. I'm not going to be doing much to this as the whole point is for it to patina with time as fast as possible with the user and I didn't want to burnish the edges, I just wanted to get it out and done as fast as possible. Now you could go ahead and burnish the edges but I didn't think it was necessarily needed for this piece so I just kept it at that. I am using Chicago screws here for two reasons. First of all, they're much easier and quicker to put on uh, which is an obvious bonus, benefits, <laughs> yeah, just love them for that. And secondly, with the chrome on the different pieces, the hardware I was using, it just really makes the whole piece pop and really gives it that character. It says, you know, it's a statement, basically. I don't know what it says, but it's, it's a statement. Go ahead and clip on those clips and uh, yeah, guys, I think we're done in this build. So let's have a look at the final result. Here you go, guys. On the left, you've got the 1964, and on the right, the 1965 versions. As you can see, they're looking really great. And yes, they're old, yes, they're battered, but boy, will they last a long time. And I am so pleased with the results on this. And I have to say, 
I didn't expect to like them as much as I do. Now, I've given one to a friend of mine for her birthday and the other one uh, was instantly taken by my girlfriend. I don't think I had much of a choice in that one really. She just grabbed it and said, this is mine now. And I said, okay, because that's what you do when girlfriends grab your stuff and just say, okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with the way it turned out and I love the idea that these old pouches can now serve once more as a fashion accessory, as something that people will take pride in, as something that people will look after for the next maybe 50, 60 years. Who knows how long these can last? I mean, that's the beauty of leather. It is such an amazing product. It is a product that can last this long and keep on giving, keep on going as long as you take care of it as well. And that's the beauty of these bags. And for me, this is a whole point of these uh, these bills and this channel is to show you guys what can be done with things that for some people were discarded. And I bought this one for eight euros. And you think, wow, eight euros for something like this that again will bring joy to the person who's going to be using it day after day? Yeah, for me, that's unbeatable. Anyhow, guys, uh, thanks a ton for following me today. Uh, as you can see, we were able to bring this old leather back to life, give it a new start, a new go, a new bit of energy here, and hopefully uh, you guys have enjoyed watching and following this build as much as I have enjoyed making it. Hopefully you guys have already hit the subscribe button, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think of these builds in the comments below. If you have had some of these pouches in your hands and uh, have used them in the past, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these. Um, if you uh, were part of the Swiss Army, as I know a lot of Swiss or most Swiss men actually have to do military service, if you were a leather worker in the Swiss Army, boy oh boy would I love to hear your comments here and your thoughts on this build and this rebuild in the comments below. And in the meantime guys, thanks a ton for joining me, thanks a ton for t letting me know what you think, and I hope to see you very soon for some more Leathercraft.